This is the best way to retrieve the top holdings of an ETF in your Google Sheets tracker. Simply enter the ticker name and the formulas automatically retrieve the top holdings for the respective allocation. You can also enter the number of shares and the average purchase price of the ETF that you hold to see the cost, market value and return per holding. There's a sector breakdown retrieved and as always a dynamic trendy chart to analyze the price movements from different periods. If the ETF holds assets from different countries, you can easily specify which ones and this interactive geo chart will display the global distribution. This second generation tracker improves the original methods used to analyze your ETF portfolio. In the first generation, we had individual tabs for each ETF. Now it's all combined into one single tab where you can choose your ETF from the drop down cell and the breakdown of holdings, continent, country and sector are exposed. The dashboard summarizes your portfolio performance and allows you to set ETF and portfolio targets to match your investment strategy. The ETF's management fee is translated into a yearly cost and the charts visualize all the data into digestible insights. Finally, there's an ETF screener if you want to visualize individual ETF data. The ETF analysis tool and the dashboard are available to access for free. Simply click the link shared in the description of this video and make a copy of the spreadsheet into your account. In the rest of this video, we'll learn how to build the ETF holdings tab from scratch. Oh, and there's one more thing. I'm happy to announce this tracker and all future trackers will include a mobile tab. This tab will essentially transform the tracker data into a mobile friendly layout. This way, you can smoothly interact and analyze the same insights from your smartphone when you're out and about. If you would like to skip the tutorial and access the full version of this ready to use tracker in light, dark, cyberpunk and matrix theme, make sure to visit my Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. Now let's learn how to build the ETF holdings and mobile tabs from the beginning. So this is what you're going to see when you first open the free version. What you need to do is go to file and make a copy. Click OK. And now that you have a copy in your account, you can simply edit and add your own private data. Okay, so what we're going to do is open up a new tab and we're going to call it ETF Holdings. So you're going to go to cell C3 and enter ETF Ticker. Remember to enter all the values and formulas exactly where I'm entering them because certain formulas are linked to specific cells. So it's best to enter where I'm doing it. So in cell C4, we're going to enter number of shares and then average purchase price. So we're just going to enter a random ETF so we can see how the formulas work while we enter them. So just the SPY, which follows the S&P 500. And let's say we bought 150 shares at $400. So in cell C7, we're going to enter this formula, which is a Google Finance, and it's connected to cell D3 for us to get the name. And then we add the end symbol and in quotations, we enter the text that we want. In this case, it's top holdings. So that way we get the name of the ETF and then top holdings. So if I change this to say ARC, the name of the title changes to ARC Innovation ETF. So I'm gonna select everything until cell H and merge it. Okay, so we entered the following titles for the table and we left these two blank because we're going to enter a formula here that's going to give us the top 25 holdings. All the formulas that I'm going to be using in this tutorial are going to be available in the description of this video. So you can simply copy the formula and paste it in the exact cell where I'm entering it. So as you can see, we use the formula query with import HTML and we're using marketwatch.com for the web scraping. So if we go to marketwatch and we search for the SPY ETF and we go to holdings, you can see that I am getting the top 25 holdings from this table. So I got the symbol and then the total net assets. We'll also learn how to get the sector allocation from this table here. But yeah, this is essentially where I'm getting it from. And you can change these to a percentage. Now we have the top 25 holdings. Obviously, if I add up all these percentages, we don't get 100%. So I like to always add a symbol called other. And here, what I'm going to do is simply enter the following formula. So equals one minus sum of all the total net assets. Therefore, we get the rest of the percentage for all the other holdings. These two formulas here is just to get the numbers. So this one is holding number one and then holding number two. And then you can drag this one down so that we get all the other holdings. So in total 25 and then the 26th one is the other. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the country via web scraping. So in this tracker, we just have to enter it manually. So obviously the spy is the S&P 500, which is in the United States. 
Okay, so before we continue with the cost, market value, and dollar return, we have to work on a few tables here. So go to cell F3 and enter cost, then current price, and market value. So to get the cost, all we do is multiply the number of shares by the average purchase price. In this case, it's $60,000. For the current price, we're just gonna use Google Finance to get the price based on the ETF ticker. All we do is multiply the number of shares by the current price. Lastly, we're gonna go to cell J3 and enter a title called MER. This is the management fee or the expense ratio of the ETF. So you can see how many fees are being charged within the unit price. We're gonna use web scraping to get the MER. And in this case, we're not gonna use import HTML like we did for the top holdings. We're gonna use import XML. So to do that, we need to go back to market watch and find the expense ratio. So we go to overview and if we scroll down, you can see that it's here. So 0.9% per year. So what you're gonna do is right click this, go to inspect. And as you can see, we got it right here, 0.09. So what you wanna do is right click that, go to copy and then copy XPath. So now if you go back to a Google Sheets, you wanna paste that XPath in cell W3. I'm pasting it here because we're gonna hide it later. So we don't really need to see it. And this is the MER XPath. So now we use the import XML to get the MER. So we enter the website with the N symbol. We link it to the ETF ticker and then we link it to the XPath. So there it is. Okay, so now we can work on the top holdings table to get the cost per asset. So all we do is multiply the cost and we fix it with F4 and multiply it by the total net assets. And there it is. We can see the distribution of the cost based on the percentage of net assets or allocation. We do the same for the market value. And for dollar return, we just simply subtract these two. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the sector allocation. So go to cell J7. I'm gonna select from J to N and merge it. Okay, and for the sector, we got a very similar formula to the one that we used for the top holdings. All we're doing is changing the table number so that it links to the sector table that we saw earlier. And again, I'm gonna enter other at the bottom. So now we're gonna go to cell M3 and, and enter a random number. It's gonna enter 60. And I'm gonna select from M all the way to S, merge it, center it. And I'm gonna go to this little symbol, one, two, three symbol to more formats. Scroll down all the way to custom number format. And we're gonna enter the following. You click apply and as you can see now we get a specific format that tells us the amount of days that we chose for the trendy chart so if you want to change this to say 365 all you do is go to this cell enter 365 and the title automatically applies it in this specific format so we're gonna select all these here and merge them and we're gonna use the sparkline function together with Google Finance to get a classic trendy chart if by any chance you don't like the color that I'm using, you can change it by just changing the color code. So if you go to text color, go to custom and click this symbol, you can choose any color that you want. And as you can see, there's code there. So all you have to do is copy that code and paste it here to change it to the color that you want. And that is pretty much it for the skeleton of this tracker. What I'm going to do is quickly format this and I'll be back so that we can finish up by entering the last three charts. Okay, so I'm back and here it is. I've formatted everything. I simply added some background color, some borders to the tables and a simple conditional formatting for the percentage return. So if we go to format, conditional formatting, you can see that I entered this one. So if the value in the cell is greater than zero, then I format it in this style. I just chose green. And the opposite, if the value is less than zero, I make it red. For both tables, I also used alternating colors. So to do this, you have to select the table, go to format, alternating colors, and here you apply the color that you want. So you can see how each row alternates in color, uh, just so that it's easier to read. Okay, so let's start with the first chart. So we're gonna select symbol up to the 25th one. Then while clicking command or control, we're gonna select the total net assets again until the 25th one. And finally, the last one would be the market value. So once you have these three selected, you can go to insert chart and you're gonna choose the combo chart, which is this one here. And currently we only see the market value line. 
So what you want to do is go to customize series. So like total net assets. And you want to go down here and change the axis to the right axis. So this is a combo chart where we're selecting two different values and they have different measurements. One is a percentage, the other one is a dollar value. Okay, so for the second chart, you want to select column J, which is the sector. This one you can do all the way to other. And then the market value. And in this case, we want a pie chart. The last chart that we're going to work on is a geo chart. So you want to select the country column as well as the market value column and change it to the geo chart. And here you can customize the colors. Finally, you can hide the columns on the right because we don't need to see the MER X path. And you can also delete some of the rows here. So I'll just leave it until row 50. So you can select all of them and delete them. And there it is. That is the ETF holdings tab. The only thing we're missing now is the mobile tab. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. So add a new tab, call it mobile. And what you want to do is go to column I, select all the ones on the right and delete them. And you can scroll to line 86, select them all and delete. So basically what you want to do is go to your smartphone and open up the Google Sheets app and you should see the one you're working on on the top, which is the most recent one. So you're going to enter it and you want to scroll to the mobile tab. So now you get a view of the mobile tab that you will always see as soon as you enter. So now what you can do from the computer is start moving the columns according to the size that you want in your mobile phone. So in cell B3, is where we're going to enter the first table. So what you want to do is go to ETF holdings and simply select that first table, copy it, go to mobile and paste it. You must change the font size. And I also like to wrap the text. Now we're going to paste the second table. So again, go to ETF holdings, select that second table, copy it and paste it. Change the font size to 10 and wrap the text. As you can see, we get an error in the formulas. And this is because the formulas that we had in ETF holdings were specifically linked to a cell. And now we are pasting them in different cells. Therefore, it doesn't work. So basically, you have to do the same that we did in ETF holdings. So equals number of shares times average purchase price. And we get the cost, the current price. You see that we're linking it to cell D3, but it should be in cell C3. So simply change it to C3. And for the market value, we get the same thing. So current price times number of shares. There you go. We get the MER blank. What you need to do is first change D3 to C3 so that it's linked to the ETF ticker. And finally for S3, that doesn't exist. So what you want to do is remove that, go to ETF holdings and select the X path. So it would be this one, ETF holdings, WE3. We get a refresh result because there's an error with the formula. So as you can see, it's because it's linked to cost. So again, just change D3 to C3 and we should get the top holdings. So as you can see on the phone view, it looks very tidy and easy to read compared to the ETF holdings on the phone view. Finally, for the charts, there are two ways of doing it. You can build it from scratch like we did in the ETF holdings, or you can select the chart that we had, copy it with Command or Control C, and paste it in the mobile tab. Once you paste it, you just simply have to change the data range. So previously we had it in ETF holdings. So what you want to do is select the data range that you want. So you want the symbol and the total net assets, as well as the market value. And the chart shouldn't change, but now it's linked to our table and mobile tab. So if we ever change the ETF symbol, your chart should be linked to the table and the new top holdings. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, geo charts don't work in smartphones. So if you add a geo chart here, you will see it from your computer, but you won't see it in your smartphone. So as a replacement, all I did was enter the column chart. And it looks a bit strange and that is because we forgot to change the formulas in the top holdings chart. So simply change it to cost and market value.
And there it is, that is the mobile tab. So if we go to our smartphone, you can see that it looks very neat and organized. Perfect if you're ever accessing the data within your smartphone. I will be showing how to create mobile tabs for all future trackers. So I hope you like this and see you next time. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.